Have you ever felt emotionally connected to an image or a place? Normally us as landscape astrophotographers will take a windmill here, tree there, gorge there, under the night sky and you know, don't bat an eyelid, don't think any more about it. But have you ever taken an image or been to a place that you've felt connected to? For me, when I come to this property and I met the current landowner, he was telling me a story about an old fella who used to own this property and he used to live in the building behind me. He's now in his 90s and he, he lives in a retirement village not far from here. And he's requested that when he dies, his ashes get scattered up on a hill on this current property. So when I heard this story, I thought it was, was absolutely awesome. But behind me is his old house and it's in really, really disrepair. So I didn't know if I should image it and provide the old fellow with a print or if seeing, seeing the house in its current condition would actually disappoint him. So I've actually decided to image it tonight and just been around here, walking around and having a look at the gear that's laying around the house behind me. I just can't help but think, you know, the conversations that were had at that dinner table, talking about finances during the tough times, droughts, fires, floods, all the stuff we get out here in Western New South Wales and, you know, the good times as well. On this property that's 15,000 acres, just a life gone by and, and a life well lived. So I'm gonna image this building tonight and I hope I can do the old fella some justice. So the plan for tonight is pretty simple. I'm gonna shoot a nice big arching panorama straight over the top of this old house. And we're pretty much pointing south at the moment. So we should get the gum region of the Milky Way over in that Western sky. Uh, Milky Way arching overhead and we'll get the core over in that eastern sky. The biggest challenge we're going to have tonight will be the wind. So it is pretty windy. So as you can see, we've got some trees up there. So getting a good foreground that's got some nice crisp trees in it may be a bit of an issue. So uh, we'll just have to see how we go with that. But I'm going to get the twins out again. So I'm going to shoot a HARGB panorama. And the best thing about shooting with the twin camera setup is if I don't want to use the hydrogen alpha part of the panorama, I don't have to. I'll still have a normal panorama just with an Astro modified camera in RGB. So I will have that choice to either choose to use the narrowband data or not. So that's the plan for the image. So now it's just a matter of time. Wait till it gets a bit darker to shoot this foreground. Now I am gonna set up my gear and shoot the sky and the foreground from the same location here. So it's a true, a true representation of what's here. So I'll figure out distances from the building to get the perspectives right and also my orientation so that when I stitch everything together, it all ends up in the absolute perfect, perfect position. So anyway, I'm gonna get some gear out. So I'm all set up now to shoot the foreground and I've put my tripod in the absolute perfect position in relation to the sky so that when I shoot the bottom row of um, the sky, the Milky Way arch will be directly over the top of this building and this building will be in the dead center. So I simply do that by using Stellarium and getting a compass bearing and making sure I'm absolutely spot on. Now, if you guys are gonna try that, don't forget to use um, magnetic declination or allow for that uh, when you're working things out. So as far as forward and back go, I've pretty much got it worked out that that tree in the background is gonna breach the horizon line by one full image. So what it's gonna end up being is the foreground will be three images high. So there'll be simply one image just to get the top of that tree because it's actually pretty high uh, in the foreground. So there'll be one single image for that tree in the background. And then the second row will include all the building and then the third row will be all this <laughs> junk in front of the building. So the foreground's gonna be three rows um, at 40 millimeters. I'm gonna do F1.7, ISO 2000 and two minute exposure. So it's gonna take a fair while to get through. Probably got about an hour or so until um, it gets proper dark. So I can get a really, really good um, color balance foreground. Now, for you guys who are gonna shoot in the blue area, and I have done it before, obviously, and it's always a nightmare to get the colors of the foreground absolutely spot on. So. Realistically, there's no substitute for shooting in the absolute pitch black. Although it means, you know, you might invest an hour or, or more in shooting the foreground. It's definitely the way to go. So that's why I'm gonna do it. Let's get into it.
So that's all the images in the bag and what an absolute treat. That's the one thing I love about using tracking mounts and it's the time they give you. And sure, it does take a long time to learn and get your head around them, but it just gives you all that time back. And just to sit out here tonight on a chair and just enjoying, enjoying the surroundings, enjoying being out here and, you know, isn't that what it's all about? Well, it is for me anyway. So yeah, I, I had an absolute epic night. I can't wait to get home and get working on this one. Thanks again for joining me out here under the stars for another adventure. I really hope you guys enjoyed the image. And until next time, cheers guys.